This is Lesson 15 in our study of Proverbs 31. It is a study about a woman that I call Moxie. And she is an example of a force of character, determination, courage, and nerve. So after our last lesson, did you take some time to take a look in the mirror? How are you presenting yourself? Is it a true visual description of who you are? Is it what you want people to really know you as? It is not a facade. It is not a pretense. But truly, it needs to be a mirror. It needs to be a mirror of who you are inside, of your character, of your personality. And did you take some time to take a look at your bedroom? Is it becoming your retreat? Our bedrooms represent where we are in our life, how we care for the things in our life, our possessions. Do we care for them or do we toss them to the side? It is a very important place and it needs to become a retreat for all of us. So that leads us to lesson 15 and it is entitled The Gates. And the verse says this, Her husband is known in the gates where he sits with the elders of the land. Now we have to get rid of that image, that 1950s image of the perfect wife is only the only way to become the perfect woman. So we're going to change some words in there and we're going to say her partner is known in the gates, sitting with the elders of the land. And I challenge you to open your mind a little bit more. This is not simply your partner in life, but this is anyone that you are in partnership. That can be at work, that can be at your kid's school, that can be on committees. Any place where you have signed up and said, I'm here, I'm invested in this, you have become a partner. Now, what is so important about the city gates? Well, it is the place where the elders, where the people of influence sat during the day. It was their town hall. They sat and they watched as merchants, as vendors, as people walked in and out of their town, keeping an eye on what was happening. It was the place that you went to watch and see what was going on in that day. And there is limited seating at the gate. Not everybody was invited to come and sit. It was only people of influence, people who have made a name for themselves, people who had some kind of responsibility, some power within the city. Now, the image that can come to mind is the hubby that's sitting, hanging out with the boys, smoking cigars, while wifey is tending to the kids making their clothes, feeding the hungry, and saving the world. And if we put her in moxie clothes, she's wearing purple gowns and a tiara. But that is just a cartoon. A successful man or woman will tell you that they would not be able to achieve what they have without a strong partner, and it's true. Success alone is very different than success shared with somebody you love. Sacrifices are made, responsibilities are passed back and forth, and one fulfills the gap while the other is taking care of business. And done right, both parties celebrate in the achievement. Done right, both deserve the reward. And it takes a very confident partner to be the support person. It takes a kind and loving partner. It takes a moxie to ensure the partnership is working even if it feels sometimes like it's one-sided. So what is these characteristics of that partner? Well, it is who Moxie is, and we have learned that she is fearless and creative and relentless, strong. She is a CEO. She is kind and generous, gracious. She's organized and resourceful. She does good. She is reliable. All of those things come together and create a very confident image, a very confident person. And that person is rare and she is priceless. There's another cartoon that plays in my head when I think about this and when I put Moxie in place of that partner. And it is a group of men sitting at the gates of the city and they are observing. They are watching a woman who is alive and vibrant and engaged in life. And they're all wishing 
that they had one of those. So how do you rate yourself as a partner? And your answer is going to be overshadowed by your belief in what a good partner looks like. So envision Moxie as a partner. How would she approach life or conflict? How would she handle struggles or success? Once we allow ourselves to be clothed in Moxie's wardrobe, we can then begin to see life through her eyes, and it looks so very different than it does today. I'm also reminded of Lesson 4. And the verse in Lesson 4 said this, She is reliable, and all who rely on her lack for nothing. These two verses mirror each other. So Moxie has a confidence, but it's not based on her achievements. Rather, it is based on who she is. And we've taken a long time to define who she is. The Moxie that we have come to know is clothed in strength. She is fearless. She is reliable. She's trustworthy. Oh, she is open. Kindness, prayer, confidence, priceless, praise, precious. She seeks and works and gives and cares. She contemplates and purchases. She plants and advises and makes. She knows things. She laughs. She supervises. She speaks out. And she is surpassed by none. And because that is who she is, her partner, and all who she is in partnership with are known in the gates and they sit with the elders of the land. They are given places of honor. My prayer for you this week is this, loving Father, help us to become confident women, a confidence that is not dependent on our accomplishments or our involvements, our associations or our busyness. Rather, let that confidence flow out of our character And let our character reflect that which is recorded in this proverb. Above all, allow our confidence to be grounded in your love for each of us. This is not a piece of Moxie's wardrobe. Rather, it is an outcome of clothing ourselves in strength and dignity and becoming women who can laugh without fear at the future. Thank you once again for joining me on this Moxie journey. If you've not contacted me, please do so. Send me an email at moxie at a silverthread.com. I would love to hear of your moxie journey. Until next time.